Hello everybody, welcome back to the Big Bad Bench. I kind of remembered to start the stream today. How's everybody doing? My name is John, AKA Big Bad Biologist, and today we have a big mess on the Big Bad Bench. I guess we always have a big mess on the Big Bad Bench. Um, we have a Macintosh TV that's been um, sort of disemboweled. Um, we gotta put this thing back together. Um, so let's first say hi to folks in the chat. We got Garth Beagle, Jeremy's Vintage, Hillbilly Shack, Mac84, Dave's Vintage, Apple Tech, Sloopy Malibu, Epictronics, and Alan Gracia. Uh, good morning, y'all. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Gut Bomb's here too. Starbuck Tech's here too, even though he says he's not. Let's all wish Steve a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Steve. Um, or at least I think that's what he said yesterday. <laughs> I was still giddy from fixing a power supply yesterday, so, you know, I did some things go in and out of the big bad brain. That, that's a new one. Um, so anyway, let's get this thing started because I'm already behind schedule here. We got to get out of here because Trina's streaming right after me, so got to make sure we're out of here. Um, so first thing, I want to show you this mess. So this is a um, the TV tuner part of this thing. Um, and so this thing had, you see all these electrolytic caps in here, they all needed to be done. Um, and oh, I gotta take this off. Um, this thing is basically all metal shielding. Um, and you can see some of those leads are like basically attached to the ground planes and there's no space. This is just a nightmare of a soldering job. So I did that off stream so um, I wouldn't get permanently demonetized from YouTube due to excessive cursing. Um, so yeah, this is this bit's basically ready to go. We gotta solder this back together. This is really a pain in the butt to take apart. Each of these little things is a little solder blob. <laughs> and so you gotta like desolder all of those little blobs and you know, it's a giant metal thing so the heat soaks away super quick it's a mess so but hopefully this is ready um one i do have a little bit of concern one of the caps i don't know if i got it in the right orientation or not i forgot to take a, a perfect picture of it beforehand um so we'll see if if a cap explodes inside well i guess we won't see because it's all the way down inside the mac tv um the other part of the tv tuner is this board that the tuner pops into this part right here is just a mess of um, aluminum polymer caps and so they all need to be replaced uh, but luckily um oh shoot i forgot to do the thing do we have a web capture Sorry, I forgot to copy my audio over to that one. Uh, one second. I'm a professional, folks. Hello. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah. Um, so this is from uh, uh, Bruce Rain's recapamac.com, and he has one of these diagrammed up so that you can see what um, how to recap one of these things. So let's... And then the other thing... Um, is the the cd drive um, which has aluminum polymer caps and this part was really bad um, so i did this part off stream because also it's got some plastic stuff around it so it took me a long time to be really careful about getting stuff off there we still have some more to finish up on this one um all right what have i missed here Jeremy finally learned the difference between vegetarianism and veganism. Okay, well, um, we all learn things. So, um, I had Chris Angelis is here. How's it going, Chris? Steve's having brunch out. Are you watching the stream while you're having brunch out? Uh, Adam McGee, how's it going, Adam? Yeah, so this is one of the stupid things about this computer is the CD drive, right? It's a caddy drive. And we have the beautiful beige popping its face out behind there. So um, I don't think I'm going to paint it because I don't want to permanently 
do something to this thing, but it's so, <laughs> it's so stupid. And then the, there's actually two little windows here. There's caddy loaded, and then it's like, oh, there's a thing. I don't know why they do this. This one's a mess. But anyway, we got to do this. So let's uh, let's get our hot air going, and let's rip some of these caps off here. Can we go to the microscope? And also, I'm still playing with my audio settings, so um, let me know how the audio sounds. Um, you can see here, when we're looking at these caps, there's definitely some crustacean happening. So we're going to put our very high-tech heat shield right there. What is that? Uh, so, Alan Gracia, how's your uh, new iPhone? You can see like the brown juice coming around there. Oh, that's nasty. It smells lovely. It's about to explode. Wow, it smells bad. Look at that color. Oof, what a mess we have going on there. Okay, so I think the first thing we're gonna do here is put a little flux down. Then we're gonna do this thing. I bent one of my new soldering tips my brand new soldering iron. Look at this, I bent my angled bent tip. I don't know if this is gonna... Oh God, oh God, oh God. Eh, let's see if it still solders. Um, but first we're gonna use a big honking soldering iron. Yes, Trina says, don't be too long. Yes, we're, you're streaming right after me, Trina. Don't worry, I already said it. Adam, you got a new phone yesterday. Is it an iPhone 15? Oh, this is bad. This thing's bad. I might need to use my, uh, polishing wheel thing on here, the eraser bit. Wow. That one's cleaning up a little bit. You can see the edges are a little corroded. What a nasty mess this is.
So if you have one of these uh, CD drives, what is this CD drive called? Um, this is a Sony CDU 561-25. Clean that thing. <laughs> get it, get it taken apart and heal it. Scrapey, scrapey. There we go. We're making some progress now. The way it foams is like wild. Okay. I think we made some progress on that. I think uh, I can set that aside for now. Let's do some isopropanol. Mmm. Yeah, I think the other name for this drive is a 300i. Gotta scrape up some of this stuff to get it solubilized by the isopropanol. What a freaking mess. <laughs> it's like watching a crime scene clean up. Yep, Adam. <laughs> Garth did a video about uh, recapping these things, so there there might be an actual video out there in the world about it. Flux this. Hit it again. Uh, get a new region of solder braid. Polish up my solder tip just a skosh. fresh solder on here. Scrapey, scrapey. All right, that's a lot better.
Whew, all right, now we gotta put some caps on that thing. Let's clean it off again. Gonna hit this with the toothbrush. <laughs> I missed the cap. Yes, I know. I'm uh, keeping it for patina. <laughs> um, I just, I, I didn't have all the cap values written down, so I'm just gonna um, do one value at a time for this. Unlike the power supply that we worked on yesterday, where I made up a little diagram. I was lazy here. Sorry, folks. I didn't make up a little diagram for this. So we'll just do one cap value at a time. These should all be 47 microfarad 16 volts, which are the Macintosh's favorite cap values. Um, 47 microfarad. 16 volts. We got a whole drawer of them. Uh, let's do these ones. Okay, so we're going to need three of those. <sighs> Sorry, I thought this job was going to be an easy one. Well, at least I cleaned up the uh, TV tuner board a little bit. Um, I did have another little issue or, oh, issue arise right before the stream. The hard drive in this thing died, <laughs> so it refused to boot up. But luckily, I had made a um, a backup on my um, well, my my two CI is basically my main Mac machine at this point, um, and so I had a backup on there. And so I popped it over to a new blue SCSI and it booted back up again. So even though we don't have the original 160 meg SCSI drive that was in this thing, we got something. Yep, if you're gonna be working on old Macs, you're gonna need a lot of 47 microfarad 16 volt caps. Or at least Max from the uh, early mid nineties. Okay, so when I do these, I'll do I put solder on one side, let it attach. Do you have an upgrade card in the 2CI? Yes, I have a um, uh, what the heck is the card called? It's a Carrera 040. Um, so it's a full fat 68040. And it also has cash on the card as well. The... <laughs> My 2CI is also really, really stupid because I have like 64 megs of RAM in it and it takes about an hour to post. All right, so only two little tiny ones. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, Gut Bomb. 
getting a different ROM chip in there would be a good idea. Um, it's not, I, I do have a spare ROM sim too that I got from KMAC. Oof, look at that mess. That is awful. Um, let's do a little cleanup first on this one. Let's see if that makes any difference. Let's make it a little easier. There. Just gonna make our cleanup any easier by cleaning up some of that nastiness first. Let's find out. We can get rid of that. We're done with that. These little 10 microfarads had less cap juice, though. Still nasty looking little, nasty looking little thing there. Oh, you little solder pads. Penman GR, how's it going? Retro Techie's here too. Hey, Retro Techie. Retro Techie's been doing some nice little videos lately. Make sure to check out his channel if you haven't done so lately. And right before I started my stream, I saw that Epictronics' new video is out. That's going to prove to be a awesome video, I'm sure, given the machine that's in there. bit of crust here. This one was a little worse than that one, than the first one. <clears throat> yeah, the green machine. <laughs> oh yeah, Jeremy, if you're working on a 2SI, make sure to get that thing apart immediately. Get that power supply out of there. Especially, I mean, if it's never been done before. See, that one's fine. This one's becoming fine. Actually, gonna check that one. That looks pretty bad, actually. 
A little scrapey action here. Whew. There you go, Trina. All right, let's just double check and make sure that looks okay. How's my audio? Am I yelling too much? I can't even see my TV because there's a freaking, or I can't see my computer screen because there's a Mac TV in the way. All right, beat machine. All right, so those are all right. They don't look great, but they're fine. It's just a CD drive. And then Rudy Retro Intel's here. Rudy had an awesome little video on a um, uh, BBC Micro. The algorithm didn't show me that until this morning when I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning for no particular reason. But I'm glad I finally got to see it. All right, so I think we're done with the big soldering iron. Let's go back to the little guy. And we'll tin this side. I don't know why I keep saying little videos. <laughs> People's videos are pretty epic. Uh, I already forgot what these are. 10 microfarads, 16 volt. 10 microfarads, 16 volt. I should have some of them around here somewhere. Nope, not that one. There we go. <laughs> so he, he he used the thing from you but not referenced you ah oh, that's a shame I would, I, I can't, I can't blame him. When I get up here and start doing stuff, my brain doesn't work right. There's things I always mean to say and people I mean to thank. I forget all the time. <laughs> Rudy, I don't know if Rudy's asking that seriously or not, but she only mentioned it like six times so far. Yes, we gotta, I gotta hurry up. I'm taking too long on this job. Gotta get out of here for Trina. Alright, that one has a bit too much solder, but it'll be fine. Um, Alright, let's move on to this mess. So this is a little part of this guy. Oh, I only have a half hour. All right, so let's pull up Bruce's thing here. Um, just show you again. Recap of Mac.com dash AU. And Bruce has a nice little diagram here for what you need. Um, 
I can't see anything. There we go. Okay. Now I can see that. And I just minimized my chat. Oh my God. I'm trying to rush and things don't work right. I want to I want to make sure that people have plenty of time to to chill out after my super intense stream so that they can be fully fully uh immersed in your stream, Trina. All right. So what do we need here? We need one one microfarad 60 volt or one microfarad 50 volt. Yeah. We only need one of these. So let's start with that one. Um, in Bruce's diagram, he has the orientations of all these things. Well, you better be awake during my stream, Trina, or you're um, you're gonna be asleep for your own stream. One microfarad, fifty volt. Okay, you go back in your drawer. Do the other side on that one before I forgot that I only did one side. All right, they are nice little solder joints right there. Now, what do we need? Which caps are these? 50 volt 0 0.47. So those. Two of those. Oh, geez. Come back, you little cap. I think. Yep. Stuff's flying everywhere. <laughs> You're right, Rudy. All the cool kids are here. That's it. I'm always I'm, I'm always honored when people are at my streams cuz I'm I'm kind of an idiot. And so to have all these cool people here helping me, cheering me on, keeping my spirits up is very useful. All right. There's one of those. But that there so I know where it is stripe goes down and then for this one stripe goes left put that one on there do that one on there really a shame that I'm so squeamish. I think I would have been a good surgeon. Although I think I am starting to give a little bit of the uh, ataxia in my old age. All right. So 
that's that one or those that's those two we're making progress here folks and what do we got now we got 4.7 microfarad 35 volt we're gonna need three of those What did I say? We need four of those. Did I say we need three? We need four. 4.7 microfarads, 35 volt. Okay, so those all go up here. Uh, I'm gonna turn this around and make it oriented like how Bruce's diagram is. That one goes up there like that. That one goes there like that. That one goes there like that. All right, let's put these three on first. I think that's how that song goes, Trina. Stripe that way. Okay. Stripe that way. Right that way. And for all these, the stripe is the plus because we're using our tantalums, which is the opposite of the electrolytics because, yes. All right, and then there's one more of these that goes there. And the stripe goes to the right. <laughs> Trina said the weird AI version does go like that. That's funny. I was at a concert one night where they, um, the opening act and the, um, headliner wrote a song together well they didn't write a song together they had chat gpt write a song for them and then they sung it and really it wasn't bad i mean these ai tools are getting kind of crazy all right so i think we're good there and we have one more up here 47 microfarad, 6.3 volt. Oh no, I got ones that are a different color than the others. Oh, the whole color scheme of this is going to be off. This one, the stripe is going to go right. Oh, Weird Al. I was thinking you said Weird 
Uh, maybe it's more than maybe it's more than the ataxia. Maybe it's actually my brain starting to head out. It's one of the things I'm doing on this one. I forgot to go in and put some um solder mask down on there so i held that up a little bit as i was putting that on just so that i'm sure there's a gap underneath it's a better idea to put some solder mask on these open traces so that you're sure you don't short them but um, this technique works okay push down just a little bit on there Come on, you little thing. There we go. Coming up just a skosh. And yeah, it would have been easier to just put on some solder mask, but my, my UV light is really not great. So there you go. Let's see, we got a little bit of space in there, so we're sure not doing that. <sighs> Adam says, leave the CD beige and paint the floppy door beige to match. This one doesn't have a floppy door on it. Um, even though it's the same as, as you know, the um, other Macs, this is an auto inject that's in the, the Mac TV. Or at least this Mac TV has an auto inject in it. Um, so now we should have four, 4.7 microfarad 25 volts. we doing on time oh geez we're going slow I'm going too slow Trina's gonna have my butt gonna get in trouble all right let's tin the pluses on all these and actually I'm gonna Wick away a little bit of that old stuff. Just makes the soldering a little bit easier for me. Lovely. I'm joking, JVHS. I think we're going to be all right here. We, we're speeding like right along in this part of the project. I was actually worried that this was going to take longer because it's so tedious all these little caps that's a lot of caps in a small area
Okay. Let's turn this one this way. Come on, come on, thing. Oh, that's why you don't touch it when it's still, still melted, molten, molten. All right, those are all our caps. Woo! All right, slow ride, take it easy. Yeah, Alan. Yesterday I was in slow mode. Today I'm trying to be faster. I also want to, I do want to show off this Atari 2600. It's kind of funny. Um... So this Atari I bought, I don't know, a couple months ago, and I just had sort of let it sit on my workshop floor and didn't do anything with it, which I'm severely regretting now, um, because when I took it apart to, to clean it, it was very dirty, it was very moldy, I knew it was moldy, um, so I took it all apart to, to clean it up and just to take a look on the inside to make sure that there was nothing obviously wrong with it. Um, and there were bugs inside. Like, they were dead, but... Um, I don't know. They, they, I don't know how long they had been dead. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of a mistake on my part um, for doing that for not not taking care of those right away <laughs> all right so we got all of our caps on give us a little clean we're gonna have to mount the um, tuner bit and then we should be good to go Switch up soldering iron. It's gonna switch to my big one. A lot of flux residue and nastiness on the big bad bench right now. A debugging session, yeah. It actually cleaned up real nice. Cleanups here. We'll see if we have time to rebuild, rebuild the CD drive or not, but we don't need the CD drive to boot up. I don't even know if we really need a hard drive to use the TV tuner on this one, because I think on this one the TV tuner is actually kind of a hardware feature as opposed to like on the, the newer machines where it's a software you can access it through the inside of the computer. Um, We'll find out. I haven't played with this much, so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with this. So let's set that aside for now. Set that aside. Okay, so now we got this thing. Oh, yeah, this pokes out back. <laughs> um, yeah, so the whole point is I want to play, I want to connect the Atari 2600 up to this thing. So I have a um, Commodore 64 that needs work, and I want to connect that to my Power Mac, um, what the heck is it, 5200? Now I'm forgetting the, the model number. 
Um, so I want the Commodore 64 to be connected to that one because it has the TV tuner. And I want the Atari 2600 attached to this one. These were sort of twisted over like this. I think I gotta soften up the solder a little bit on that one to get it to click down into place. Yeah, these things are just like giant heat sinks. It's a pain. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Taking it apart was a nightmare because they, the way those little tabs are twisted over. Um, goes like that okay let's zoom in a little bit here uh oh I think I just knocked something off the big bad bench <laughs> I'm only going to put a little bit of solder on those just because, I mean, it doesn't need a ton. These are the important bits. Is there a composite input on the Mac TV? Yeah, I think there is. Okay, so there's this thing. And then I think this clamps on top of there. Oh, I gotta do all these little divots. Ugh, all oh, the little divots. All right, let's bang those out real quick. I think we're gonna use big solder for this. Haven't used big solder in a long time. Not totally filling the wells in case I do need to take this thing back apart. <laughs> I don't know much about analog. I don't know anything about analog TV tuners, so I don't know how excellent the RF shielding needs to be. It seems based off of the construction of this thing that you have to be careful about a um, about the EMI or whatever's happening in here. I'm just a guy that likes to solder. All right, there's that. Let's set some stuff aside. 
And I think we're almost ready to go here. All right, so let's zoom back out. Um, uh oh oh no it's still there okay um oh rudy says that the shield is about fcc rules okay well that's good i'm gonna use my flannel here as a protector um uh, so there you go there's the back of this guy so yeah we've got a um, composite input there. This thing goes like that. And then we have this thing that kind of resembles a um, memory board thing for a Mac Classic. Okay, so we got our blue SCSI V2 with the backed up drive image on it. And plug in a mouse. And I, oh, oh geez. Okay. I apologize. I tried to find settings in my camera to make it so that this thing would be less flickery but I think we're still kind of flickery. All right, and here's the Atari 2600. Um, oof. So, oh gosh, oh gosh, I just dropped the controller. It's probably destroyed. Um, so I just hacked the original cable. The original cable was actually broken, so I didn't care breaking it more. Um, and then I just put one of the big BNC style connectors on there. And I'm just gonna attach that. All right, so let's power on the Mac TV first, get it to boot up. So one of the neat things is, even though this is the wrong remote for this thing, it still works. We got Chime. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera, so um, it's gonna be shaky for a minute. Hold on. And sorry about the, uh, sorry about the, the flicker. This was about as good as I can get it. Um, boot it up, so our system's good. Um, this should be a light sixer from what I can tell. I'm not a big Atari expert, but I think based off of the way the front of this is, it's a light sixer. Um, so yeah, the inside of this thing, well, the outside was covered with mold. The inside was bug's nest. It was pretty gross. Um, all right, so let's go see if we can go to TV. All right. We got a, a, a buzzy noise. Channel four three. Oh, where's okay? Mm it's not letting me select channel three. Let's switch up 
think I was set to channel 3. Darn. How the heck do we adjust our channels? Why is it not let me do that? So it must have a program function in there somewhere. Well, that's a shame. I can hear it doing something different here, so I think it's close. Or I might just have to do a... a which I'm gonna call it mod to this thing. I guess I should check and make sure my t my uh, Atari 2600 is right. Oh, yep, you can see it just changed. So I think the Atari 2600 is working, but let's check it out. Oh. On the big bad TV. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> My remote for the TV shut that off. Hmm. Um, source. Okay, so that. Okay, now my TV's being weird. <laughs> we can't get, can't get nothing working right today. Joe's Computer Museum sells a composite mod that I use on his Atari 2600, cool. You can output on channel two on the Atari. Really? My Atari might not be going. Huh. We might have to diagnose the Atari at some point. Let's just double check that the uh, AC adapter is adapting. The channel select switch on the bottom is for channel 2-3. Oh, I thought it was for channel 3 slash 4. Yeah, our, our uh, AC adapter is adapting. Atari 2600 after diagnosis after party. All right, let's try uh, channel two. Hey, there it is. All right, so channel two, it's on channel two. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> All right, let's plug this back in. No, the 2600 is working. Go to uh, TV. Okay. So the tuner is not working properly. 
Well, that's a shame. Ah, oh, we're so close. We're so close. Um, so I'll have to do some diagnosis there. But, so we got the, we know that the Atari 2600 is working. We can, you know, we're hearing stuff. You can tell that something's happening here, right? If I shut that off. So maybe the, um, there's a whole bunch of potentiometers on that little board. So maybe the potentiometers need a tweak or something. Um, so yeah, but we're close. And yeah, I can hear some noise coming through. Darn. Let's go back to Mac. What's that? Oh, this is the, um, so if you hit the TV Mac button, it changes to line in. Now we're back to Mac. So we could use the, um, the composite adapter. Oh, well. Try another TV to check the Atari. Yeah, I just plugged it into my t big TV behind us and it, it showed up there. So the Atari's working. Um, the Mac is not working. So, we're close. We're close. Um, yeah, I'll try a VCR or something like that. Um, oof. But yeah, thanks for the, the tip, Adam. I always thought it was channel 3 or 4 for the Atari. <laughs> well, so we have a, um, a booting Mac TV. There's audio coming through it. I think we're, we're close. So, I'll have to look and see about like tuning that thing. Um, yeah, I'll try channel three on the Mac and then, uh, then we'll come back to it. All right. So I want to thank everyone for, for stopping by today. Um, if I get the tuner to work, I'll, I'll post a short, um, thank you all for being here. It was a ton of people. I'm, I'm, I'm always humbled that, um, so many people show up for these streams. So many awesome people. You're all really cool. Um, I, and I appreciate y'all. Um, it's time for Trina's stream. She's posted her link there. Um, and I think, uh, Tech Ambrosia had to cancel her stream for today. Um, but definitely check us out tomorrow for Dave's Vintage Apple Tech stream. Um, so yeah, have a lovely day, y'all. Thank you so much for being here and have a good week. <laughs>